is Nilesh Patel, who is in town filming a documentary. And um, I, I, don't, I, I guess we can call it a controversial type of documentary. It's not quite a Michael Moore thing, but uh, a tape done a number of years ago called Brocket 99. is legendary in southern Alberta. And this is sort of the focus of your documentary and why you're in Lethbridge. Is, it, was, is that fair to say? Um, pretty much the tape is uh, sort of a background vehicle to take a look around uh, attitudes in Alberta and Canada as a whole and also just look at what for a, t a tape that was made so long ago why it's still around and how it traveled so far for it being well what you said controversial well let's go back uh, why did you want to do this what was the inspiration maybe and, and for people who say what is Brocket 99 maybe we can I guess start with that well you could probably tell people better than me what Brocket 99 is Mark but that's besides the point. Why I started is something that I grew up listening to growing up in Prince George, British Columbia, and just realized a couple of years ago it was still around due to the internet. And there's websites floating up, and sort of like, why is this still around? It's 20 years old, and sort of trying to figure out why we were listening to it and why it's still being listened to. There's something within the tape uh, that reflects Canadian attitudes in some way, and it's probably a discussion we should have, and it's not to say you shouldn't listen to them or you should listen to them, it's just to talk about why you're listening to them and taking a look at how your attitudes are that allow you to possibly proliferate the material as well. Sure. How would you describe the tape yourself, your own personal opinion of what Brocket 99 is? Uh, the tape is definitely prejudicial, um, but the humor is contextual to a lot of people so that's where the controversy comes from is can I laugh at something I see and so for myself I see the prejudice within it but I also understand that you're laughing at something maybe that you're seeing and that's where the discussion has to come from um, what that means and what we're seeing and where we go with this at that point we can't live in the past so this tapes the past so why is it growing now and do you find that it is growing well, it, may, it basically is growing just due to the internet. The internet has an amazing ability to proliferate, proliferate uh, sure. media. So, uh, What are you trying to get at with this documentary? And well, maybe well, let's go even back further, because you have to get, uh, get grants to, uh, to, to go out and do a documentary. You've got guys over here that are, are, are taping us as we speak, so you got, you know, there's lots of money tied up here. Well, uh, not lots of money, but some, <laughs> some money. There's some money. Um, what do you? I'm going to need that question again, Mark. Well, just because, wh where do you where do you start to get funding to do a, a documentary where on do you something? Start yeah. to get funding. You generally go to your basic funding agencies in Canada or your broadcasters and attempt to get a license. In the case of Rocket 99, you find that to tap into something that is this controversial, those doors close quite quickly. So you make a choice whether or not you think this is something people will be interested in, and you go out and you apply for more credit cards, and then you pack <laughs> up your car and you head out for six weeks on the road to Alberta, Saskatchewan, and BC to make a film. Sure. And so you were able to get some kind of funding or not? You're looking at the funder. Okay. You're, you, can, you can take a look at my visas if you <laughs> want to see the funder. Is this going to be worth it in your mind? Yeah, it's a great uh, learning experience for me and for the crew. And it's the first documentary that immediately people are quite interested in. And it's something that I don't think broadcasters and funding agencies understand that Western Canadians, uh, a lot of us heard the tape. <laughs> and are definitely interested in learning a little more about what was went into making it and why people are listening to it. I know you're at the early stages of making this documentary, but what kind of response have you been getting from the people that you need to interview? Very uh, mixed, which is completely expected. Some people who complete the, think the tape is completely racist and should you should never even listen to it. You hear a second, you should throw it away right away. Others who try to explain the more rounded approach that they understand that it's prejudicial, but they also seen seen certain stereotypes all the time and feel that they should be okay laughing because they have a brander sense to know that the stereotype doesn't represent all the people within the tapes. And then other people who just think it's dead on. That's exactly how every every uh, indigenous person is, and therefore this tape is a good depiction. Sure. So that's that's kind of where the doc goes. There's a lot of different opinions and. See what's out there. Now, where is this going to be aired if you, when, once you finally get it done? Have you got a broadcaster yet? We have no broadcaster. Global. <laughs> um, definitely go to the film festival circuit, and uh, that's probably the most uh, potent venue for a film like this. And then go for broadcasters because this is a Canadian documentary. This 
cape could have only been made here, this film could only be made here, and it's definitely something at least Western Canadians and at least Atlantic Province Canadians have heard of the tape. If, as we've seen with the elections, Ontario and Quebec may not have heard them, so then nobody <laughs> else should need to see it, I guess. Well, best of luck on your uh, filmmaking, and uh, well, maybe we'll see you the completed project soon. Best of luck with denying being the creator of Brocky 99. Thanks for joining us. Oh, boy.